So what is my first impression? I thought that she was a crazy bitch. <laughs> so why is uh, Cambridge better than Oxford again? Can you shut up, please? This is a real Viola <laughs> Helen exposed. <laughs> my friend. <laughs> <laughs> My question is for you and Ibs. What? <laughs> for me and you? I can speak back slang. I can speak back slang. Like the harder work. you work, the luckier you get. Damn, I like that. Yeah. Copyright Viola Helen. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hello. Today I'm here with... Ibs Mo, yay! Yeah, you guys probably already, they will probably already know, know you to be yeah. honest. So today we're just going to do a get to know Oxbridge students and um, a more personal Q&A. We already filmed an academic yes. Q&A on Ibs's channel and he has a really cool intro so go check that out. Leave a like please because we're struggling out here. <laughs> okay, so the first question is from H. Dot Garvey. Um, uh, Garvey, but it's fine. <laughs> you can you can be that. Okay. <laughs> hey, for your Q and A, have you always been naturally smart, or do you have to work hard? Also, where would your dream house be located? Okay. Um, have you always been naturally smart, and do you have to work hard? I have not been naturally smart. When I first started, like I don't know what you. I know what it's called. Like for example, in like year two, year three, year four, year five. Oh, they're like yeah, five. They're called like sats or something sats like that. Or key, key stage three. Key stage three. Oh, and like mm, levels mm. thingies. So like for that, I was pretty okay with like I always get the highest grade in my class, and then like things just happened. Life just happened, I guess. And then I kind of yeah. went down here when the GCSEs obviously mine were two Bs, three Cs, and two Ds. So not naturally smart, you could argue. Um, or do you have to work hard? So I don't really believe in like this idea of naturally smart. I feel like I don't believe in. I don't think smart, smart isn't it. I think that you do find some individuals who are very like, uniquely like amazing at things. I think there's analyzed. natural ability but and think... quickness on being able to pick up things, and therefore it helps you revise and study more effectively than others. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's unfair, but that's just the way it is. But I feel like but smart. I feel like, no, it's not smart. I think everything it's it's always to do with hard work, how hard you work. And so yeah, I got a horrible GCSEs, but my A levels was two A stars and an A, which was all down to like. The hard harder work. you work, the luckier you get. Damn, I like that. Yeah. Copyright Viola Helen. <laughs> um, I would say, yeah, I would say I do work hard. I don't think I work as hard as I could do. So in that way, you could say I'm naturally smart. But yeah, I uh, I don't really know. Um, where would your dream house be located? So, Hawaii? What? Hawaii. What's that? You know what Hawaii is? No, what's that? Do you not go to Oxford University? One of the best. What's that? One of the best. Hawaii. <laughs> well, it's how the the real way you pronounce Hawaii, Hawaii. Oh. So I would love to go to Hawaii. Ever since oh. I watched Lilo and Stitch um, and everything that has Hawaii related, I just love Hawaii. Um, yeah. Um, or like a Canada. I don't want to say in England. Do you want to say in um, England? I don't want to say in this place. I don't know if I want to stay. I don't know. I'd like to live in a. I don't know. I don't know. I'd like to live in China for at least a year. I'd like to live in another European city for at yeah. least a year. I don't know whether. I think I'll end up probably in England as my, my base. I know everyone ge generically says New York, LA, my America. My only issue. I think. Because the thing about you is mm. you're a traveller. So how am I going there? <laughs> Teleportation? I don't like to fly. I don't like to. I don't like Euro to travel. Tunnel. Euro so tunnel. So Euro tunnel. <laughs> the submarine of death. Um, so I don't know how I magically appear to be at these places. Hawaii. <laughs> like, I don't know. How yeah, I, gotta, you... I had to fly. <laughs> like, I don't want to be there. But, um, yeah. Next question. Hey. So, Sarah Crown. <laughs> Royal Sarah. Princess Sarah argues. Argues. Saying, oh, waiting again. for results today. Is gonna, were you worried about your results? Or did you kind of know what you did well? So, A-level results. I kind of was nervous. But I kind of knew what I would be doing. Um, just because I had a good backup plan. He has a video. I will link it here, right? And I always... Yeah, yeah and I always I had this... I don't have a video. What video? Do yeah, know? your A-level results video. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, had that. Had I had that. Video. But, like, in terms of a backup plan, I basically said to myself, like, if I get A star, A star, A, take a gap here, apply to Cambridge. If I get A star, A, A, like, apply for this course. If I get A, 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 do this. A, A, B. Like, I made it with, like, every scenario of what grade I could get. I had a backup plan, which I prepared for one week before, like, results day. So I wasn't really scared. But, like, to be honest with you, I kind of felt like I was going to get decent grades because my exams went okay and throughout the whole year I was performing well. What do you think? See, I'm different. Oh! Um, I, I 
know that I didn't work as hard for my A-levels as I did for my GCSEs and my AS. And I actually thought that I had missed my Oxford offer. Um, and I was actually okay with that though, because if you watch any of my other videos, I applied for a different course at every single university that I applied to. So I knew that if I wasn't going to Oxford for just solely classics, I'd be going to Edinburgh where I could do classics, chemistry, Chinese yeah. and French. Uh, with a psychology module potentially as well. Wow, so basically um, everything. So the national curriculum was her degree. So I was actually happy knowing, you know, if I was, if I ended up at Edinburgh and I was happy, I was, I think I was prepared given that I thought I didn't perform that well at A-levels, I thought I was going to Edinburgh, so I wasn't that nervous. How did you like, um, how did you prepare for that? How, like, how did you put yourself at ease if you're like, oh my god, I don't know what my grades are? I just kept looking up Edinburgh University and the accommodation, because that's my insurance choice. Right. I was looking at accommodation, idea, actually. I was yeah. looking at um, the student forums on the student room for Edinburgh, I was looking at like lots of different websites and blog posts like people who go to Edinburgh watching vlogs. Yeah. And I was getting like excited about going and then <laughs> I th then I did get into Oxford, so then, it wasn't as bad. Then did you start watching Oxford vlogs? I, was, I w used to watch Oxford vlogs before when I was applying. Okay, cool. Yeah. Who did you watch? I watched Oxford vlog. This is for the Q&A. Aww. Gina, I met her. I don't know who that is. What was it like living in London and do you think you'll move back after uni? Um, so living in London, I'm from like North East London. I'm from South West London. Oh wow, so we're probably like the opposite. opposite. Um, North East London was grey, like it was very like sort of hip, but the East part was a bit like, you know, a bit like... <laughs> Take my, take my money. Like, it was a bit like, you know, a bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah a bit, a bit. Um, so I, I didn't, not that I didn't like that part, but I just didn't like that part. Um, so London was fine, but I don't really know if I prefer being there. I think I like being at Cambridge because I'm here the whole summer because it's just more calmer for me. The air is more blue because the sky is more blue. <laughs> the, the air sun. is more clear. <laughs> oh yeah, because it's summer. Yeah. It's summer but like even like the stars, London. you can see the stars. You can, I don't know, you can ride a bike if you know can how you to ride, ride a bike. bike. I can't ride a bike. I swear, what if you ride a bike, you can't can. ride a bike. I just feel like it's more like, I feel a lot more calmer here at Cambridge. But obviously there are parts of London it's that I miss. It's the hustle and bustle of London that I really like. The hustle and bustle, I like that, yeah. Yeah, I really like yeah. that. I miss like, I miss like the authenticity of it all. <laughs> the authenticity. <laughs> <laughs> like, the culture, stuff like that. Like, I kind of miss that. I miss like the East End. I don't, I don't really go to the East a lot. No. Oh. the Western Central. Okay, well. Yeah. And what shops did you um, go to in Western Central? What did you do in Western Central? Common Garden, oh. Embankment, South Bank. Oh yeah, South Bank is really nice. Parks, yeah. Um, yeah. So do you think that you would move back to London after uni? Now that you've had think, your space. I think that it's hard to say that no one, that people aren't going to move back to London because obviously that's where a lot of the jobs are and that's where. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where that's where the places to be if you want to get the money and you want to get job, a good yeah. job. It's in London. So I think it's hard to say. I mean, I think I would eventually like to move back to London, but current house prices mean that I don't think I'm ever going to be able to afford it. Ellen King 98. So we have another like royalty. We have the crown <laughs> of Ellen. Um, how do you afford to travel so much? If this is a bit personal. Oh, this is <laughs> so how do you afford to travel so much? This girl travels from freaking A to B to C. When is your, when's your holiday to Mars? <laughs> Next year. How do you afford? Qualify. How do you afford to travel? How do I afford to travel? So, um, unlike most people who spend their money <laughs> on like trivial things and alcohol and going out, I save up my money because I know that I prefer to spend it on travel. Um, also, I use my bursary. Yes, <laughs> bursary save Oxford, it up, Cambridge, save it up. student loans. Um, yeah, student loans, save it up because if you're really good in term time and budget, you actually do have money left Definitely, over. Definitely, yeah. And I just spend that on travelling because I like to spend my money on experiences rather than clothes or like food or alcohol. Or going why are you looking at me when you said that? <laughs> no. So yeah, that's why. That's Time's why up, by the. <laughs> that's how I afford to travel. Also, some of my holidays I go on are with family, so that's like family holidays. I don't fund those. But yeah, I'm lucky enough that I am able to go oh. on a holiday with my family. Um, but otherwise, I think, yeah. I think like a big issue of travelling and saving money is like yeah, not buying alcohol. Not buying alcohol. Alcohol like, is a lot. I, like, I know people can spend. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 pounds on one night out. Literally and so much I money I can go a spend. night out and only spend 10 pounds or 5 pounds. So I feel like that is the way forward. And that's um, the entry. <laughs> what advice would you give to freshers starting Oxford or Cambridge? They didn't put Cambridge, but I'll put in Cambridge. <laughs> in general this year, to do the reading list. Do, yeah, re do the reading list. As much as you work, can in as summer. As much as you can. 
Uh, try and maybe talk on student student rooms, student forums, and maybe talk. You can talk, get to know. They're quite people. scary. They can be scary, but it might be nice if there's some. Like if you're going to Oxford or Cambridge, knowing like talking to someone from yeah. the college that you're going to. And also, I would probably Facebook groups. And also watch Viola Helen and it's Mo because <laughs> it's we Mo, show yeah, you what, we it's, show like you what it's like. Here. But the reading list is uh, like quintessential. Also, um, I think just like. First time at first year. Maybe looking really looking hard. into what modules that you're taking and then just getting a general idea of what you're doing. Don't no, don't necessarily read every book to do with that topic, but maybe just read into it so you know what you're getting into yeah. and what you're doing. Is there any uni essentials which are must have? Um, hand sanitizer. So when you go to freshers and you keep shaking everyone's hands every single bloody time, we're like, hi, I'm John, I'm Craig, I'm boost and like sorry like no you that is how freshness flu happens for me it's no, hand sanitizer so really. them all the freshness flu stuff hand sanitizer is the best thing you could get what's your like really? tip um and um really a know. calendar a water bottle a Hot refillable water bottle, water bottle oh, okay. because then you can refill it all the time and there's taps everywhere I know this sounds really stupid I can't really think of anything a hot water bottle with that like is that what you just said no I said a hot water like a water bottle obviously um, I would say kettle for Oxbridge, but I know that other you universities... You guys, you have kettles? Yeah, I have kettle in my room. But you had to buy it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Where's your kettle? <laughs> in the kitchen. Oh. Which is paid for yeah, by We have it in our room. We don't have to trek to the kitchen. <gasps> that is a health hazard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, there must be other things. Um, there are, there are things that... I know there are. More oh, um, a multi, like, was it a multi adapt, like, lead cable thing? That, an extension yeah. lead, an extension lead. Also, like, um, ketchup and mayonnaise because yeah. they don't have that here. And, like, plates. Oh, pa uh, paper plates because whenever you don't want to clean up, you're in a rush, you just put your food on paper plate. Done. No, because they're diagradable. Uh, I just made bio, that up. Biogradable. <laughs> learning Mandarin. What was your experience being so far and learning Mandarin? So, I don't think I've really spoken about So, I don't know how to much. speak Mandarin, so I'll leave this question to Viola. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know if I've spoken about this much on my channel or anything. I know if you follow me, my social media links, then I was in China over the Easter holiday. I'm originally from China, but if you guys actually do read my blog um, and look at my Instagram, or and see that I'm on Huffington Post. I have written a very personal post about me and my background because I am adopted from China. And so my experience learning Mandarin, I'm not fluent, I'm not native. I started learning Chinese when I was three. Um, I started learning just an hour every week and then when I was seven I moved to a Chinese Saturday school for two hours every morning and then that was the aim was to then do the GCSE right but the bad thing about that was because everyone who went to the Chinese Saturday school they already spoke Chinese they were there oh, to just learn yeah, reading and yeah. writing so yeah. they could get the GCSE so I was really out of my depth my mum mm. can't speak Chinese she can't read Chinese and when you got to I think 14 or 15 they start teaching in Chinese Okay. Um, so obviously, <laughs> I was in the class, like, I don't understand um, what's going on. Ni hao. And I really wanted to quit, but I ploughed and stuck with it, and obviously my mum couldn't help me, and I did it, and I really was so close to quitting, but I stuck through it. I got the GCSE, I did bang, it outside bang. of school. Bang, I bang, got start. I wanted to bang, take it for A-level. But yeah, I obviously, if you know my A-level background story, I did. I couldn't, and I didn't take it for A-level. And so my aim was I wanted, uh, my, my one of my life goals is I want to be fluent in Mandarin. My experience learning it, it is hard. You've got to put in the hours, especially if you want to, fo not just focus on speaking, but you want to focus on the reading and the writing because that takes up a lot of time. Yeah. Um, in my I'm gap year, like, yeah, like I, I spent two months, I spent four months in China, two months of which I was learning Mandarin intensively. Four hours a day, one to one for, for two wow. months. So I improved, I'd say, in those two months from GCSE to above A level. Uh -huh. um, and then I, since coming back from my gap year, I haven't really touched Mandarin much at all. Um, but now I'm going back to China in two weeks' time. I'm studying Mandarin for three weeks That's intensively. Amazing. So hopefully it'll all come back to me again. I can speak English and I can speak back slang. I can speak back slang. Have a gee, have a gee, have a gee. What have we got? Wait, what? What have we got? Well, I was actually joking. I actually don't have to speak. You can call me on speaking Mandarin. I can speak. What the hell was that? <laughs> that Mandarin? <laughs> I can speak ski. Yeah, Hi, Ski. How Ski? How Ski? You Ski? <laughs> ski, Ski is so easy. Ski can't Ski, 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 but Ski. Next question. Oh, by the way, the, the battery died. This is why the angles are really weird. Yeah, um, the battery died. Okay, so I'm back with the questions. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was said today. <laughs> Her name was today. Screenshot. There we go. Katie Adamson, 12, says... Have one, two. <laughs> one, two. Have either of you met anyone you could see yourself with at all at uni? Okay, I didn't realise that Viola was going to ask this question. Um, <laughs> I just gave him a 
I don't know. Because I'm from like a deprived, <laughs> sad, <laughs> unfortunate background. Because of my background, I just feel like I would blend with someone who comes from a similar background so, to me. Yeah, I you don't really get that at Oxbridge. Um, you maybe do get like one or two people uh, and they tend to be a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> like me! I know, I think it's... I think we probably we each have probably met people who have the potential, but we just haven't yeah. seen that either haven't seen that side of them, or we just don't see them in that way for now. Would but you, they could maybe. Would you um? Do you advise to people like for example, a lot of people they might have this idea that they can meet their bay their bay at uni. What do you think of that? Or like they come think, to uni I looking for a bay. I think it's a social construct. I think people have the oh, pressure. Damn. They're the pressure damn. to think, oh, I've got to go to uni, and that's where I find my husband. When actually you can find your husband anywhere at any time. Yeah. And even then, you don't even have to get married, guys. I feel like it literally does just depend on. It depends on so many so factors. Many fa yeah. yeah. I was about to say that she copied my line. <laughs> for the Q and for the Q at a, what is your favourite childhood memory? What's yours? Oh, uh, that's really hard to think of on the spot. Damn. Childhood memory. Damn. Ah. <laughs> I think it's how I'm really, really sad, and like, you're all gonna feel sorry for me. But like, for example, I um, used to live at my dad's house for a bit, and I, my mum's like, used to have her house, and it used to always be locked while she travelled, and once I snuck into the house, and like, my dad didn't let us watch TV. Oh. So I snuck in once, and I watched TV, and I was really happy. Like, I literally was so happy. When I, whenever I commit crimes. Or oh, one of my best childhood memories is probably when me and my brother bunked. I bunked year five and he bunked year seven. And um, it was one of the, it was a really, really windy day, like back in 2005 like, or something like that. And we, all the trees came down and we just stuck into my mom's house. We bunked off school and we just played PlayStation. <laughs> and it was like amazing. It's so naughty. And we, like, we, hide, we hid like from my dad and we pretended that we were going to school. We made like pet lunches and everything. And then like we just played PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. Uh, I think one of my favourite childhood memories is when me and my cousin were quite young about maybe 9, 10, 11, um, and we went to, we always used to go to this National Trust place uh, called Cliveden, and it had a lot of, the gardens were really beautiful, and we used to always go in the gardens, and there used to be like mazes, and we used to always climb trees, and we'd just leave our mum yeah, so and aunt, to commit crimes. and just go and climb commit the trees, crimes. and it was really, really nice, um, I can't really think of any others, oh, and also in Cliveden there's like a lake and garden area, and we used to just always What's go over the stepping stones on the lake, and like hide in the rhubarb bushes, <laughs> it was really <laughs> A monkey! <laughs> What's your cousin's name? Douglas. Shout out Douglas! Does he watch the videos? Yeah, he actually does. Mwah. This is from Amy Danek. Uh, which family member was... Oh, wow. <laughs> was the least supportive when you both expressed interest and applied for Oxbridge? So I didn't really tell that many people I was applying to Oxbridge because... Ox Cambridge, sorry. Not Oxbridge. <laughs> um, because I feel like it already puts you on like this pedestal of like... <gasps> You think you're clever. Or you're going like to get in, or you're not going to get in. I, like, I don't. And the satisfaction that they, someone will get if you, if you tell don't them. Don't get in. If you don't yeah, get in, don't, well, get don't in. pressure me. Don't. Yeah. So when I applied, I didn't tell that many people. Um, and then when I when I was waiting for the offer, for my interview, stuff like that, um, I told people I got rejected. Because Oxford get their, they, for some stupid reason, get their offer, like, before hours. So the boy at my college who got into Oxford, like, he got in. And everyone was like, if did you get in, did you get in? I was like, leave me alone, please. Like, can yeah, I just breathe? Yeah. And then I was like, no, I didn't. So everyone could shut up. Mm. And then when I did get in, I like, oh, remember I lied? Yeah, I got in. Because I felt like I wanted to put their, because I literally felt like I wasn't going to get in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I put their expectations down first. Then when I okay. actually get my rejection, then I can deal with myself. I worry about myself and then worry about you. Like, no. Yeah. So no one was really supportive, but I just didn't tell Yeah, anyone. I think, no, it's not that people weren't supportive, but I think. Yeah, I was worried myself about whether I was going to get in or not if you told a lot of people because mm. it... Like, I honestly didn't mind that much about whether I was going to get in or not. But then if you tell people, then they kind of just sneer at you if you don't get in. Yeah, it's really... Um, or they think, oh, I told you so, or kind of like that. But you do have haters because you when you apply haters, to Oxbridge, yeah. like, you are saying, in a way, I'm clever. And obviously some people don't like that. But the one thing I did do, though, was... So after interviews, but way before we even got an offer letter, I told my would-be boyfriend that I didn't get in so I was at his house we were really good friends yeah and I was like yeah I got rejected like, oh, I didn't get in straight after interviews and he said oh like that's a shame and this was in December <laughs> because we get offers in January mm -hmm. um but yeah so I was just telling him that I didn't get in I, I, <laughs> I think, don't know why I did but that but I think it's important to note that like 
There are some teachers who don't think that you should apply to Oxbridge as well. Mm. I don't know if you had any. Oh no, my, my teachers thought I should apply. Mine as well, but I have heard like other students that I know, because I also was a tutor last year, um, people would like discourage them from applying to Oxbridge. That's like the worst thing that any teacher could do and yeah, it's so it sad and not just Oxford University in general my point is is that if you know that you got the grades or you could get the grades and that you are passionate about your subject don't listen to the teachers just go for it you never know or even family members as well because it's your money it's your you're doing the interview you're doing the application like just, just do from you it, yeah. And if you get rejected, then you need to learn from that, no one else. Yeah. You know I mean? But also, saying that though, my mum didn't actually believe me when I told her I got an offer. I was on the phone and she said, what? No, you didn't. <laughs> and I just said, mum, well, I did. <laughs> she just didn't believe me. Why not? Because she thought that. Because she thought... She probably was in denial because she didn't want you to go to Oxford. <laughs> That's probably no, why. No, no. <laughs> That's because probably why. She heard after my interviews, she thought after I told her about my interviews that I w wouldn't have got in. Oh, uh, was it that bad? Yeah, some of them. Did you cry? No, but one of them I was like, oh, some people cry, in. you know. I didn't, I didn't care that much. I didn't cry. But some people cry. I'm like, get a hold of yourself, Jane. <laughs> um, so this is a funny question. Farhan, who has a surname. Um, how did you two meet, and what were your first impressions? Literally, she called me one night and was like, "Hi, Ibs." I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And then she's like, "I'm a really big fan." And okay, I'm so right basically, your the house real now. the real story is. Um, <laughs> so I obviously, oh, I, always, yeah. I, obviously, I obviously vlogged on YouTube and I uploaded my vlogs. So one day I get an, an, an email in my inbox saying, you've got a new comment on one of your videos. I click on the comment and it says, yes, Viola, yes. And I honestly thought, who is this person? Are they taking the piss out of me? Like, why are they being rude? Like, they're just being really mean towards my videos. Anyway, then I clicked on his channel and then saw what he was like on his videos and then realised, oh no, that's just what it was like. Just like dramatic. Yeah. And then Old. Ibs messaged me on Snapchat yes. and said that we should collab. That was five, five months, months ago. ago. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I saw, because I was new to this Oxbridge scene of YouTubers, and um, obviously like, you had the, the big names, well, then you had the popular names, and then Viola showed up as well. And for me, I don't know, like we, we talked about this when we came here, it was just really empowering for me to see like an Asian woman like documenting her time here, because like, I know some people think, oh, like it's common to have Asians at Cambridge, <laughs> but like, it's kind of not at the same time. Yeah. Like it is really badly represented. And to actually voice that, like, yeah, okay, it might be common, but to actually be public about it and say, this is what I'm doing, I think it's so brave. And I like that. Um, and I like her content, um, especially her first, the first, the first video, I'm Married, <laughs> dramatic, which I love. Um, and then, yeah, like, then we just sort of hit it off from there, and then we just grew. Yeah. Which is weird. Um, so what was my first impression? I thought that she was a crazy bitch. <laughs> and that she wasn't smart. No, I'm joking, of course she was smart. <laughs> what is the future of Viola and Ibs? That's what somebody, that's what I know. <laughs> the future of Viola and Ibs? It's we're gonna do more, more collabs. Videos, yeah. More collab videos. If she can um, come to Cambridge again. No, he's coming to Oxford next term, guys. Okay, well, if I get attacked, <laughs> then you know why. Um, hey, if you're still looking for questions, Priyanka Ram wrote, kiss emoji, fire emoji, <laughs> rose emoji. How messy does your room get when it's exam season? <laughs> So messy, so I messy. I don't let no one I don't even one have exams right room. now and my room is so messy. I don't let no one come in my room. And like, we have a, a bedder, or like a cleaner, and um, who comes Oh, you call them a bedder? We call them scouts. Wow, that's clearly offensive because you go to Oxford. Um, so, actually, don't even say they. My friend. <laughs> <laughs> What's her name? Julie. Her did name is Julie. Did you get her a card to say thank you? For Christmas, I did. I actually didn't even open it. She left it there. I was like, it's not I got mine a box of chocolates. Sorry, the card is enough, sorry. They don't do that much. <laughs> Wait, what's the question again? <laughs> oh, how messy did you Is it messy? And I said to Julie, I was like, please don't come in here, like, for a whole month, because it's so messy. And my desk was covered with books and papers, so, like, I um, just used to go to the library. But a, like, a little solution is to get, oh, I already said this, paper plates. <laughs> Or get like, I don't know, what's a good for environment? There must be some paper plates that are good for the environment. Like... There must be. We'll find out and then use them so that way you don't have to do lots of cleaning. Dasana wrote, how do you stay healthy at uni? I don't. I don't. <laughs> if you've seen guys, I actually have, I fluctuated with my weight since uni. Like, I gained weight. I can tell, yeah, you're looking a bit. 
I gained weight um, in the second term and then I lost it again. But then I, I gained everyone, it again. And then I think, I lost yeah, it again. everyone like, gains. Everyone in gains in second term and then loses. And then of loses exams. and then gains and loses. It's kind of fluctuates. I'm you trying to, to stay healthy, but I'm trying to get into a routine. But I have gained. Yeah, I have gained weight. I think you have to manage your like. You have to manage your time. You have to, like, you have to, um, yeah. We have. We all. Oh, well, I don't know at your college. Do you guys have a gym? We we have free subscriptions. Do you have a gym? Uni gym. Do you have a gym? No. Where's your uni gym? Is it far? Yeah. <sighs> Well, if you came to a more developed <laughs> university, other, like other colleges at Oxford have, have their own gyms. Okay, but do you go to that college? college. <laughs> Dude, if you see the oh, I just like spider webs everywhere. Do you it's even use your things? <laughs> so I see it? those weights <laughs> in the corner. I don't get I talk to anxiety, so I use it here. <laughs> Um, you can, you can time manage yourself and you can go to the gym, yeah. you can go to We size, just might not be the best rowing, people to yeah. talk to you about this. Maybe I if I get into a healthy routine next term, I can talk more about we it. Will, we will, we will. We will. We will. Running every morning. And yeah, uh, we'll do like a healthy how to food. stay healthy video. I think it's worse as well when you're catered, Inspired so I'm catered, by. but so it's harder to like oh, eat yeah. healthy food. Yeah. See, it's different for me because I'm able to control like my food. I can eat like lots of protein, yeah. which I do and like... I eat our, can our whole food is quite oily and greasy. And also, it's mainly carbs. It's I've mainly heard. carbs. Yeah, um, carbs upon carbs. Mash and chips. <laughs> like, literally, death. Okay. What are your top three binge worthy TV shows? Um, Gilmore Girls, um, um, Big Bang Theory, and Game of Thrones. Gossip Girl, Game of Thrones, and. Coming back this Sunday. I don't know. Yeah, no. I don't know. I've got quite a lot. What else do I watch? Jane Virgin. Pretty Little Liars. Pretty no, Pretty Little Liars isn't really that good to binge watch. I don't Get think. Out. I really like Mistresses. I might watch that. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, Pretty Little Lies ended really badly. I won't Yeah, I don't like Pretty Little Lies ending either. Please, man. What makeup product could you not live without? Oh my god. So the product that I will not live without is Vaseline. It is the best thing that you can get on the market right now. Let's just pretend I have one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. What's yours? Um, I don't know. So I don't really actually wear that much makeup, guys. I never wear any. Really she's lying. Nice she's wearing five. She's doing five like foundation sticks. Um, I don't even. Swipes. I don't wear foundation. Um, I'd probably say. I don't. Know, I can live without any make with no makeup. I think I could. I think Vaseline. Yeah, yeah. probably Vaseline. I don't wear makeup, so I can live without it. There's an alpaca invasion. Pick a friend or stay alone, and why? Oh, I would. I think it depends because if you pick a friend, you're gonna always end up having to kind of split off anyway. I feel you might have to, but then it depends how like mm, I might pick. What's an alpaca? Yeah, what's an alpaca? <laughs> <laughs> Oxford students do not know um, what an alpaca is. I would pick a friend. Because if I would choose a friend, I would, I would... use them as a shield. <laughs> so you ready? You ready to cut? <laughs> I think I would pick a friend, yeah. Or eat them. Then you're not alone. Or have can... sex with them and like reproduce the world. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> what would you do? I'm thinking strategically here, girl. Strategically, I think you would have to... You'd either have to pick a friend but only use the friend. Mm. Or you'd have to just be alone and just be in it for yeah, yourself. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Yeah, I think that's all we have time for, guys. So thank you very much to Ives. Thank you. Make sure you go check out our Q&A on his channel. Yeah. The next vlog is a travel vlog, so make sure you watch it. I really Ooh. had fun what, um, editing it. It's Lithuania. Damn. I don't yeah. even know where the hell that is. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, we guys. Love you. Love you. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I don't have cool intros like you. Sorry. <laughs> They, they called it. The oh. just right. I don't know what they what they call it. Um, that's what she said on Tinder. Uh, <laughs> and blame he, her because she he's didn't bring... rushing because his basically his camera battery is really really bad. She didn't bring her own camera. So he told me camera? not to bring my camera. I don't remember saying that. Yeah, you do. Do you have proof? Yeah, I do actually. Well, we're busy. So can you do? <laughs> Double checking. Let's imagine. Imagine. Because the sky is more blue. <laughs> the air the is more clear. <laughs> oh yeah, because it's summer. Do you want to charge the camera? Yeah, shall we? Yeah, this is like the longest. Oh my god. <laughs> Hello? Okay, we're coming now. Bye bye. And we apologise for those who have to stick around and continue to watch Viola be at the second best university in the country. We love you, bye. <laughs>